money and with British bombs. We know that the history of Britain's role in Palestine generates a special responsibility on us, the British people. A responsibility on us to see that the rights of the Palestinians are realised. A responsibility on us to see that Palestinians can return to the homes that were taken from them. A responsibility on us to see that Palestine is free. Because in 1917, it was British imperial administrators who first granted away Palestine, a land that was never theirs to give. In 1947, it was British soldiers charged with protecting the rights of the Palestinian people who instead stood by and watched as the Nakba unfolded. And in 2024, it is British politicians who send arms, diplomatic support and even soldiers to aid the ongoing Israeli genocide against the people of Gaza. At this very moment, there are British surveillance jets flying over Gaza, supporting Israeli massacres. Leicester, in Kent, in Glasgow, sold by our government under unrestricted open licenses. The truth is that the Israeli war machine is only able to carry out this genocide because of the support and the impunity it receives from our government. And make no mistake, our government supports war in Gaza for the same reason they supported war in Iraq. They support apartheid in Palestine for the same reason they supported apartheid in South Africa. They support the partition. We can show just a fraction of the remarkable courage that is displayed every day by the Palestinian people. We can follow in the path of those who have organized in anti-colonial movements for centuries. Again, our solidarity, our voices, our action are needed now more than ever. Since October, Palestinians have been experiencing the darkest times. We have all seen the harrowing images played our, across our television and social media screens. Heard the voice of six-year-old Hein calling for, me, for help from a car in which she was left as the only survivor of an Israeli airstrike. Palestine, the figures of Palestinians killed continues to rise, currently over 33,000, which shockingly includes 14,500 children and 9,560 women. During the ICJ hearing, we learned that at least 10 children a day are facing amputations with no anaesthetic. We have heard of new acronyms created for the situation on the ground. WCNSF, Wounded Child, No Surviving Family. I'm looking around and I am so proud 
that the Palestinian solidarity movement is diverse and it is multicultural. It is a cause of humanity and hope. Humanity and hope in defiance of the scale of the atrocities that we are continuing to witness. The exceptional number of those killed, wounded, missing, captured or detained. Families completely and utterly wiped out by Israel's AI targeting. The unprecedented, the unprecedented destruction of homes, of hospitals, of schools, of places of worship and other infrastructure. The starvation and disease caused by the deliberate, yes, the deliberate denial of food, medicine, fuel and electricity and the blatant violations of international humanitarian law. The UK and US's ongoing role, the repression, the dehumanization and disregard for Palestinian dignity, the double standards, the racism continues to chill us to our bone. This war on civilians hangs over us and yet the horrors continue before our very eyes. Here, we've heard already about the way that Israel is acting with impunity, starving the population, killing tens of thousands of people, and talking still about invading Rafah, where there will be an even greater humanitarian disaster. And what we know is that our government is arming Israel. We know the United States government is arming Israel. We know the German government is arming Israel. But the amazing thing is they are not winning. They have one of the most sophisticated armies and air forces in the world, but they are not winning against the Palestinian people. They cannot, they cannot defeat the Palestinian people. They have become a pariah state. They've become, they've become a pariah state, firstly because they are, everybody knows that what they are doing is a genocide. Secondly, they have lost the battle of Palestine solidarity because of people like us think the struggles of the Palestinian people and the solidarity around the world is the thing that is going to make sure that Gaza wins and that the Palestinian people get not just a ceasefire, but get justice for the Palestinians, freedom for the Palestinians from the river to the sea. Out today and every other day, there are no words to adequately describe the depravity that we have seen unfold over the last six months. I struggle at this point, seven months into a genocide, to find words heavy enough to convey their crimes. But I've come to realize that this is actually a good thing because what has been happening and what is happening is not normal. There should never be words that normalize and legitimize the crimes that the occupiers commit daily. Whilst they continue their crimes against humanity, we should remain in shock and unable to process what is happening and continues to happen. One of the main acts of criminal depravity is the use of healthcare as a weapon against health workers and the Palestinian people. 500 health workers killed whilst on duty, murdered in hospitals and clinics. And sisters, on behalf of the Sudanese anti-war organizations in Britain, we send our solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Palestine. We say no to the Zionist occupation of Palestine. We say no to the war in Palestine. We say no to the killing of our brothers and sisters. We also acknowledge the interconnection between the war and the occupation in Palestine by the Zionist and imperialist global powers and the wars around the world. Yeah. So we want to stay there. I'm going to finish my speech 
with one of the main slogans of the Sudanese revolution. I'm going to say it in Arabic, then I'm going to translate it in English. The main slogan is freedom is hurriya salam wa adala wa thawra qarar al-shab. Hurriya salam wa adala wa thawra qarar al-shab. It means freedom, peace and justice revolution is the decision of the people. It's not a choice, it's a decision. Let's hope I can do better this time. Free, free! All right, when I say free, free, I want you to say Sudan. Free, free! Sudan! Free, free! Sudan! Free, free! Sudan! And uh, on that note, there is a visual on Monday at Trivago Square for Sudan commemorating the one year anniversary of... Let's hope I can do better this time. Free, free! Sudan! All right, when I say free, free, I want you to say Sudan. Free, free! Sudan! Free, free! Sudan! Free, free! Sudan! And uh, on that note, there is a visual on Monday at Trivago Square for Sudan commemorating the one year anniversary of... 21 members of my family. Here are their names. My father, Nasrin Na'ouq, 75 years old. My sister, Walain Na'ouq, 36 years old, and all of her children. Her children are Ragad, 13 years old, Islam, 12 years old, Sara, 9 years old, Abdullah, 6 years old, my brother Muhammad al 35 years old, and his children, Bakr. In memory of all those that have died in Gaza, and we had a beautifully observed two minute silence in memory of all those lives that have been lost. Just reflect for a moment. Each of those lives that were lost meant an awful lot to a lot of other people. Each child that was lost, if their mother or father are still alive, for the rest of their lives, they'll be thinking on that child's birthday, on special days. What this was a hugely provocative, illegal attack by Israel. But the way the media and the politicians talk about it You'd think it was Iran that was on the offensive, that had committed that terrible crime. That it's Iran that wants to start a wider war. But the truth, friends, is this. It's Israel that launched the attack. It's Israel that's determined to whip up a wider war. And not only with Iran, with Lebanon too. Those attacks and the ensuing conflicts would be terrible. How many thousands would be added to the terrible death toll in Gaza? But the greatest... The end of the Easter holidays. On this weekend, Eid weekend, we still come. We still come. We all came for Gaza. We all came because we know this Eid that just went, or this Easter holiday that just went. We had the privilege, the privilege to sit with our friends and our families and our loved ones and our children, our nephews and our nieces. We heard and we know that that was not the case for those in Gaza. Minimum at least 33,000 Palestinians have been killed, of which over 13,000 children have been killed under this genocide. And this is why we come. This is why we came. And I am proud of every single one of you that came, that sacrificed their time today. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. You have work to do. We have work to do. On the 27th of April, Saturday 27th of April, will be the next national demonstration for Palestine. But for that to be successful, I need, I need, and I'm asking, I'm pleading, and I'm begging, everyone, get onto your socials. Tell everyone, Ramadan is gone, your break is gone. We cannot afford, we cannot afford to sit back and be complacent. If you have not come out before, come out again. 
from Manchester, from Blackburn, from Birmingham. Everyone, book your coaches. From work, book your day off. Get on trainline.com. Plan your journey. Book your taxis. Everyone onto the streets of London on the 27th of April. Is that clear? Do we stand with Gaza? Do we stand for justice? Do we stand with Palestine? Do we call for sanctions on Israel? Together, sanctions on Sanctions on! So on the 27th of April, I see you. Yes. I see you. Yes. I see your mum, I see your dad, I see your uncles. Yes. I see your next neighbour. In Newcastle, in Bristol, in Cardiff, in Oxford, in Tunbridge, today there is even a protest on the Isle of Orkney. Yes. Friends across every corner of the land, People are saying in one voice to the Palestinian people, we see you, we hear you, we stand with you. Now we are now over six months into Israel's unfolding genocide. None of us, none of us.